Happy New Year. And definitely we're glad that you're here this morning. At the top of your uh, bulletin, it mentions that we welcome you and pray you have a blessed in this worship time. Please register your attendance in the red pew pads there in front of you in the uh, back of the previous pew. And also prayer concerns will be lifted up again later. And if you'll fill out the blue card, which you'll find in that red pew pad, um, there will be people coming around <coughs> Excuse me. during the prelude to pick those up, so please get those filled out right away. And if you are a visitor, please fill out one of these. It's also in the pew pad, or the uh, back of the pew. Um, give us the part that has your name and address. You can keep the other part as a bookmark. And we have multiple announcements today, but I'm going to start first with Melinda. Thanks. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you for the support for Phil's friends. And um, I'd like to update you on what is needed at this time. Um, the main thing that they need now are journals. And these are journals that are not spiral bound. They're, they're just, you know, just open them up but not with the, the wire. Toothbrushes and chapstick. Those are the three top things. So again, thank you for your donation over the years. Right there by the Phil's Friends box, which is in the back corner. If you have the fronts of your Christmas cards, <coughs> excuse me again, the women have a box there to collect those. They're gonna use those, I guess, for their notes for uh, upcoming prazars. And the envelopes for giving are also on that side table under the quilt, and they'd ask that you would please sign if you decide to take it one a pack of, I use them once a month when I turn in my check, so I've got lasts for several years, but if you need some new ones, they're over there. Ruth mentioned, 
the beautiful poinsettias we have will not be here next week. So if you want them, take it home. Otherwise, don't ask where it went. Uh, and uh, the decorations for Christmas, as much as we enjoy them, it's time for them to come down. So if you wish to help de-decorate the church, then come Wednesday at 6. And they'll have it all done because if you stay here until 7, you're going to have to come join the choir because choir starts up at 7. Okay, so is there anything I forgot? Oh, yes, this large thing in front of me. Um, the Christian Church has a screening um, of a Dr. Greger's 2016 presentation, How Not to Die. I thought, well, that's an interesting title. The Role of Diet in Preventing, Arresting, and uh, Reversing the Top 15 Killers. So they brought us this poster. They asked us to lift it up. It is on Friday the 10th at the Christian Church down here in Route 8 at 6.30. So if you'd be interested in going to that, I'm sure they will let you in. So you may see this around the church, but they want us to bring this up. Any other announcements? It's wonderful to see all of you, and it's been a while since we've seen some of you because holidays have taken us away and activities and so forth. So would you get up and greet others with your passing the peace? Good morning again. It is indeed a pleasure to be here. When Laura and I want to thank everyone who came out Friday for, for my party, my birthday party. And we had a great time. We just, but we want to thank you all for your presence, your gifts, your cards, your encouragement uh, as we go into this new year. Um, as we ended last year, we, you know, I thought we just ended it on a wonderful note. We had, uh, for the Katana, we had something like 142 uh, people here for the, for the singing. For the children's program, we, we had over 100, 112 uh, for candlelight service, we doubled what we did last year. We was at uh, over 90 people here for the candlelight service. Um, it was just a great time. Uh, as we go into this new year, I'm just looking forward to what God is going to lead us to. Um, I did find on, on back on by Jim's desk, there's a little snowman. I don't know if it's nearing off a zip or what, but if somebody's missing a little snowman uh, during one of those evenings, uh, it, it, it's here in the church. So... Let's prepare our hearts, our minds, and we go into a time of worship as we listen to our prelude.
I never quite know how to follow up after him. <sighs> no, you can't. Would you please stand with me and join in the opening prayer? God of our hopes, Christ of our faith, spirit in our hearts, we come to worship you with joy and gladness. Your goodness knows no limits of the generation or gender, of condition or citizenship. You are kind to all, and we worship you in all sincerity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Um, invite Mike Siway to come up and all those that want to join him. Mike is coming to us as a profession of faith, uh, joining his church as many of, of you met. It's, I thought he was a member, and, and lo and behold, found out that, uh, that he wasn't. And so today we get to do one of those great honors in the life of a church. You would not believe how many of our churches throughout the Indiana Conference have not had one profession of faith over the course of several years. And we've had a, our share last year and we're already starting off this year, so I'm just excited of where we're at. I'm going to invite you to watch the screens as there will be questions for you to uh, participate in this ceremony as well. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. So, Mike, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. According to the grace given to you, Will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? I will. And do you, the congregation as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Mike now before you in your care? With God's help, you will Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, 
you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. And after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all we are here. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. He declared his works to the nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns with you in the unity of Amen. Now, in the United Methodist Church, we believe in one baptism. And we accept baptisms from other churches. Mike has already been baptized. We don't rebaptize because we believe that God got it right the first time. And so we don't. But we do reaffirm your baptism. So, Mike, remember your baptism and be thankful. May the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through the water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. So, Mike, as a member of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? I will. As a member of this congregation of the Hebrew United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. Members of the household of God, I commend Mike to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you to Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service and our witness, that everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Mike, on behalf of this congregation, I present you with the church's membership, but one that's more suitable for framing and welcome you into membership of this congregation. Thank you. Thank you. From the book of Matthew. Hang on a second here. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus' light shone for all of us to see. Given what we just said, is your light shining today? Is your light shining every day? So, those of you that feel like standing, please stand. If you have to sit, it's okay. If you want to raise your hands, raise your hands. If you want to shout, I'm okay with that too. But join us in Shine Jesus Shine, please. Cowbell's okay. Cowbell is also all right.
just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Baby, walking close to everybody happy new year what what year did we just start 2020 isn't that crazy well did anyone make any goals for 2020 Emma you made a goal what's your goal no well I made a couple goals and I'm gonna share a few of them with you yeah they don't no. one of them is to exercise more Think I'm think I'll stick to that goal? No. no. <laughs> and another one of my goals was to, with my own girls at home, do some more Bible songs that I grew up with as a kid. And a lot of those songs I learned in this church growing up in this church. So I thought today would be a great day to work on two of those goals at the same time. And I chose a song that I used to love to sing as a kid in this church. And I thought, 
we would sing it together and practice it together. And it has motions with it so we can get up and start moving around so I can get my exercise in for the day. Think that'd be a good idea? Now you might have heard this song before and this song has motions obviously that go with it. And the big kids can help the little kids with their right arm and their left arm and their right foot and their left foot. And we're going to sing Father Abraham today. Have you heard Father Abraham before? Yeah, well, we're gonna, Mr. Jim's going to put it up on the, on the screen here in just a minute. And the words talk about Father Abraham has many sons. Many sons has Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. And then they're going to show you some motions to do, and you have to try to copy what they're doing. All right, you ready? All right, now we're, choose a spot to stand, but be careful with these candles here and this table here. And... All right, big kids, you can help the little kids with their right arm and left arm, and, and we'll look up there. At the, yeah, look up that way, okay?
all didn't know we was going to get physical activity at going to worship at the same time. This time we come together as the body of Christ to be there. As we start out the new year looking at the prayer concerns and the joys that we all want to share. Again, I uh, want to thank everyone for the birthday wishes and the cards and the gifts and everything. But more importantly, we just want to thank you for the way that you've accepted us into this congregation and into your community. Uh, we are so glad to be here. Uh, following prayer concerns, we lifted up an unspoken uh, request for job uh, work-related prayers. Uh, from Valerie, uh, prayer concerns for our troops overseas as uh, tensions have escalated, and we certainly need to keep those uh, uh, troops in our, in our prayers. Rose is having surgery this week, uh, Thursday, uh, in the uh, University of Chicago, so keep Rose and Jerry and the family in the prayers as, uh, as we go forth uh, for that uh, surgery. Uh, and then a praise from, uh, from Vicki, a praise for Amy. She's got her health insurance, uh, so she's now going to have surgery on her kidneys uh, on January 17th. And then after they get through that surgery, then they'll be able to address some of the other issues that she's having. Those are the prayer concerns and joys that were lifted up. I'd invite you to, to lift your other concerns that you may have. Uh, I know John has got a, a torn muscle as he's playing racquetball. Thought he was younger than what he what he is, uh, but he's on on a crutch there. So let's keep John uh, in our prayer concerns. Uh, you may be aware of others uh, as we go into a time of silence. We'll go into a time of silence. We sing our prayer hymn uh, and then take that silence to lift these concerns up as well as those other concerns that you may have uh, and the joys. And then after a brief time, I'll close in prayer. Let's sing our prayer hymn. Gracious and loving God, as we begin this new year, help us to look back and remember just a few weeks as we celebrated that birth. But today we have this verse that says, Jesus came into the world and the world did not recognize him. God, open our eyes and our heart to receive this gift that you have given us, this grace and love that you have sent to us. Help us accept. And then help us go into the world to be your spokesman, to be your hands and feet, to do the things that Jesus has taught us need to be done to love one another as you have loved us. God, we come to you this morning as this congregation, as this body of Christ, with our own concerns, our own hurts, our own needs. And yet, God, we know that you are aware of each and every one of those situations. We ask simply that you pour out your Holy Spirit on those gathered here, for those that are seeing doctors that have health issues that will be having surgery, God, pour out your Holy Spirit. Be with those doctors and nurses. Guide their hands. Guide their decisions. That those surgeries would be successful. That the medications and treatment recommended would be the right ones. That those families, those individuals would be made well and whole. Return back to their families as new persons. God, we ask that you especially be with our troops as the escalation throughout the world tightens. 
that you would be with our leaders and the leaders of other countries. That we could find a way to ratchet down this tension. That we could find ways of simply getting along. But be with those men and women in the armed forces and keep them from harm's way as only you can. We lift up to you those first responders who often find themselves placing their own lives in danger simply because of the call of duty they have. God, even this morning as I was reading this terrific accident in Pennsylvania claiming so many victims and so many injuries, be with that situation with those involved. That they would feel your presence and in that presence they could find comfort and hope. Be with us throughout this year. Guide us as only you can. Give us your discernment on how you are calling us out into this community. For we ask this in your son's precious name. As we pray the prayer that he taught us with these words, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. time would the ushers please come forward and we give our gifts back to God.
join me in the prayer of dedication. As in Christ, we have obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to your purpose, O God. We seek to live now for the praise of your glory. Accept these gifts we bring as symbols of our renewed commitment to Christ's will for our lives. Use them to enhance your kingdom beyond the walls of the sanctuary and bring a sense of your presence to all that they benefit. May us ever mindful of those who are needy and more diligent in our use of the means of your grace. Amen. Please report the word from John. John 1, 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He only came as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to them that which his own, but the own, his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, and the glory of one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and the only Son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God in us, thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? God, may the words from my mouth and the meditation in all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock, in Jesus' name. Amen. So let me ask you a question. Which one of these two statements are true? Remember Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz? Clicks her red slippers and said, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. As she remembers home as a place where she's nurtured, where she's surrounded by family's love. Or, in the famous words of, from the John Wolfe novel, you can never go home again. I mean, you can physically return to the place of your birth, but nothing including yourself. Nobody is ever the same. Which one of those two are true? The memory of your home exists, but it does not exist that way anymore. Home is a word that just stirs up deep emotion. No matter how old you are, no matter where you are, for just a brief moment, there were many of you that when I talked about home, there was a flashback on what home was like. And if I asked you to describe your home, you would give vivid detail about what your home was like, where you lived, what room your, was your bedroom, how you slept, what was meals like around the family table. Home 
is an emotion that just is with us in our very being that, that never leaves, that travels with us throughout our lives. Because home is supposed to be that safe place, that, that haven where we go, where we know we're surrounded with love, where we are welcomed. A place where, where you can return to be just the person you are and don't have to pretend to be anyone else. But what if you didn't have that place to go to? What if that home didn't exist? And we're just completing the Christmas and the Advent seasons. We've just gone through the month of December lighting the Advent wreaths. Listening to those words of John that the true light was coming into the world. The light that would overcome the darkness. That Jesus was coming into the world to overcome. And so we watched and we waited and we went through Advent lighting those candles on the Advent wreath. And while we didn't prepare a welcome home banner, we lit those candles, anticipating, singing those songs, reading those scriptures, counting down the days for that Christmas Eve, that service. And Christmas came, and, and that Christmas Eve service, that candlelight service, we joined with many other congregations around the world in joyous celebration of the birth, the birth of this child. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And we celebrated. We celebrated. The Word became flesh and lived among us. Today is Epiphany Sunday. Tomorrow is the true Epiphany, the time we celebrate that the, the light in the world, that the light overcomes the darkness. But we're stuck on this verse in this scripture reading for today that Jesus was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. Jesus came home. So maybe Thomas Wolfe's novel is right. You can never go home again. Jesus came home and no one recognized him. Or if they did recognize him, they refused to open their hearts to receive him. Can you imagine what that feeling must have been like? It's one of the saddest verses in the Bible. Jesus came into the world, the world that was made through him, and yet the world did not recognize him. The world wouldn't acknowledge him. How sad. It's like, it's like because we want a hallmark mo uh, moment, right? Remember, if not a hallmark moment, maybe the Folgers coffee moment. Remember the, the ad, the Folgers coffee, where you know, the, the, the smell of the brewing coffee makes its way upstairs to awaken the parents who, who are awakened to the, the, the long absent son finally returning home and, and they run downstairs as they smell that coffee and, and to, to hug him, to greet him, surround one another with love. We want it to be that type of movie. We want it to be that type of ending. We want it to be that hallmark or, or, or maybe we want it to be remembered Tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree where, 
where that hesitant returnee is not surrounded by one, but finds a hundred yellow ribbons around the oak tree. That's the type of feeling that we want to imagine would happen. That over-the-top loving moment. I mean, remember, you've seen those videos of, of the soldier returning from the battlefield. Often, they, the, the, the TV networks can't get enough of them. Where the, the soldier is standing in the doorway, there's a knock. It often takes place in a schoolroom, remember? And all the children's heads turn toward the open doorways, expecting to see just the principal or, or maybe another teacher, nobody special. And the confusion in their eyes as they look at this uniformed stranger trying to figure out who this stranger is. And then suddenly, there's a shriek in the middle of the room and a child jumps out of their desk running into the loving arms of their parent. If you go into YouTube, you can catch a, a 10-minute YouTube video of, of a very similar soldier homecoming surprise mix because we just can't get enough of that, right? And one of those, as the ending is, as one of the teachers is saying, what kind of day is this? And the response is, this is a day of love. It's homecoming. Homecoming with love and surrounded. But what if there wasn't any recognition? What if that soldier stood in the doorway and nobody, nobody jumped up? No one said a word. What kind of day would that be? How much emptiness would you experience? Because that's the emptiness that Jesus experienced. Jesus' own creation refused to recognize him, did not know him. Jesus came home and no one, no one seemed to recognize him. Their hearts were closed. How do we go from this scripture? How do we escape from that loneliness that this scripture fills us with? We simply need to look at verse 10. But to all who received him, he gave them power to become children of God. Now clearly, clearly not everyone was ready to receive him. Clearly there were those out there who simply didn't feel they had the time. Maybe they felt that they just weren't worthy. Maybe they, they felt that, that they had to, to rush home and clean their house because it just it wasn't fitting for this king, their savior, to come into them. Maybe they just weren't ready for this relationship. Maybe. Maybe they just weren't ready to open their hearts to receive this grace, this love. Today is the first Sunday of the year. We celebrate Holy Communion. It's in Holy Communion that we acknowledge what God has done for us. We acknowledge the reception of his son. We acknowledge the grace that, that came in the form of this baby to give us this forgiveness that we are so desperate for. To realize that we are all lost in one way or another. We are all sinners in one way or another. And that we need this babe. That we need this package that came to us in the manger. We need to acknowledge 
that we are all in desperate need of this love offered to us because God cares so much. And so it's in taking of Holy Communion that we have the opportunity to acknowledge that. That we recognize what God has done for us. What God continues to do for us. While we weren't there for that birth. And yet when that birth occurs for us every single day. We acknowledge the grace and love and forgiveness offered us through the Son of God. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth or you had formed the earth from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth light, life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself our light and our salvation. In his baptism and in table fellowship, he took his place with sinners. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Make us one with, by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Till Christ comes in his final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Because there is one body, there is one loaf. <clears throat> and one cup, one cup of salvation poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Remember, in the United Methodist Church, you do not need to be a member of this church or any church in order to receive Holy Communion. You simply need to accept Jesus Christ 
as your Lord and Savior. We'll ask that the ushers release you, come forth. We're doing in, uh, communion by intention only. For those that need the gluten-free, we have the gluten-free bread and cup uh, separate for you as well. Come forward in the center aisle, receive the bread because we don't take communion. We receive Holy Communion and dip it in the cup. There is some spaces at the rail for those that want to go to the Lord in prayer. The Lord's table is set. The ushers will release you. Please stand as you're able to join our closing hymn, Jesus is all the world to me. Jesus gave us this gift to all who believed. He gave us this right to become children of God. That to you and me. The light came into the world, came into darkness. And the darkness can never overcome it. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Go in peace. The peace of God goes with you. Amen and amen.